Hi everyone, and welcome to Elite Rugby SNC podcast. First off, if you haven't already, sign up and join Elite Rugby SNC today. We provide you all your strength, conditioning, speed, and recovery needs. You can try before you buy, so try our seven day, seven dollar trial to get a taste of what we offer here at Elite Rugby SNC. You can sign up to our newsletter and receive free bonus content each and every single week. So take your game to the next level, become a beast, and join Elite Rugby SNC today. Today, we had the opportunity to speak with professional rugby union athlete Darcy Swain. Darcy currently plays for the Brumbies, which he made his debut back in 2018, and he also plays for the Wallabies, which he made his debut in 2021 against France. Darcy also plays his club rugby for the Tuggeranong Vikings here in Canberra. In this episode, Darcy provides great insight on how to be consistent on and off the field. He talks about his training routine, nutrition, recovery, how he studies the game, and provides many tips on lineouts and mauling. And he also tells us who to avoid when rooming on tour in, in the hotel. This was a fantastic episode to record, and we appreciate Darcy taking time out of his schedule to talk with us. I know you will get plenty of takeaways from this episode. Enjoy the episode, and remember to like, subscribe, and share. So today we're joined by special guest Darcy Swain. So hey, Darcy, how are you? Hey, mate. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm um, well, thanks. Yeah, that's good. And we better say hello to Ben as well. How are you going, Ben? Yeah, good. Thanks, Sharon. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm going well, thank you. Um, it's a pretty average day here in Canberra with all, the, with all the rain, so it must have been pretty hard at training this week for you, Darcy. How was training so far this week? Yeah, no, we've, we've had a pretty good, pretty good run of run of games so far. So. Um, few injured boys and few few tired bodies so yeah, training hasn't been too bad uh, we just came back from New Zealand on Sunday so Monday was just, just pretty easy and and same with uh, yesterday so um, today we had a day off so just, just been poking around doing a few things around the house and a bit of uni and whatnot yeah mm. awesome the vibe must be pretty good at, at Brumby's HQ because you've just been in form this whole year just playing some really good rugby and everyone yeah. seems to be playing good rugby as well yeah yeah, no, it's it's pretty it, it's pretty nice when you go in and, and you're winning. Um, it's it's I've been on the other side of it where you go in and you you're on the back of a few losses and it, it's not you know it's not that nice. You, you don't have that that same vibe and um and, and yeah, people are just looking at each other like just got to get out of this hole. You know, got to got to try and make something make something happen. But no, we're we're in a really good spot. Um, yeah, I think it's just off the back of boys having a good preseason and then um like a lot of things that we've, we've changed around around hq and whatnot since last year yeah awesome so taking you back to the when you were younger growing up what sports did you play and how did you end up playing rugby yeah um yeah i saw this one on the on the questionnaire it's, it's a bit of a it was a bit of a long uh like a long journey to get to rugby. Uh, started off playing rugby league from about six. Mum was coaching, dad was coaching, uh, and then did a little bit of athletics at school and whatnot. Um, you know, tried my hand at volleyball and, and rowing in high school. Um, but it, it was at the age of about 15 when I, when I stopped with the league and, and all the other sports and, um, and and just picked up rugby union and, and stuck with rugby union. Um, I saw, I sort of figured I was I was tall and it, that was a bit of a trait. If, if you were tall, you, you got stuck in the second row and um, and it was sort of something I just thought you know I could be good at. Um, yeah, so I, I, instead of just sort of chopping and changing, I just just wanted to have a crack at rugby um, and then yeah, sort of worked out. I guess yeah. Easy done on that. Um... Uh, rugby league question was that more based around the fact that that was the main sport in that area at the time or was it the connection that your parents had to the game while you're playing league to begin with yeah yeah R rugby league was massive up in far north queensland so um far north queensland grew up sort of born and raised in that region and yeah just dominated by rugby rugby league i, I didn't really know what rugby union was until yeah i was i was sort of 10 11 um so, sort of tried it around then, but was always in the league, 
you know, played a, played in like the Cairns, the Cairns teams and like the North Queensland teams, and and I really enjoyed it, and I, and I really wanted to keep keep going with league, but um, I, I just thought I'd I'd be better at rugby union um because I was tall and I, I enjoyed like I, I enjoyed the line out and I enjoyed you know the the strategy behind it rather than just trucking the ball up over and over again like in league so yeah like the, it, it was it was strange to be playing rugby union up that way um because every other bloke was just playing every other kid was just playing league like just league 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 and then there was just me and my brother and, and a few other blokes that that play union and um yeah yeah that was it really Thank God that you grew and uh, you like lineouts, so that's probably led yeah. to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you find playing volleyball helped you become a better lineout jumper? Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's just I sort of I just played volleyball for because um, my mum's my mum my mum's islander, so whenever you'd go to like family events and stuff, they'd just play heaps of volleyball, and she she started doing social volleyball, and then I jumped in and played. And then we ended up doing like some sort of competition, like weekly social competition. I, I jumped in that as well. Um, and I sort of the coordination of jumping and hitting a ball and whatnot. Yeah, probably somewhat transferred over to the coordination of jumping and then trying to catch a ball. Um, yeah, so like I guess a little bit, I don't really think about it that way. I've never thought about it that way actually. But yeah, it probably has had some effect on like jumping up in the line and catching the ball and transferring and all that. So yeah, yeah, probably has. Yeah. Good job, mum. She did well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you moved down to Canberra at the end of 2015. The first time I met you, I saw a tall, young, slender kid. Looking at yeah. you now, you wouldn't recognize that kid anymore. What allowed you to become the rugby athlete you are today? And what, what role did super rugby, uh, sorry, what role did strength and conditioning play to help you become that rugby athlete? Yeah. Um, no, nah, thanks, man. I, I was. I remember when I came down to, to Vikings, I was, yeah, dripping, dripping wet, maybe 105 kilos. Um, yeah, sort of sit now at you know, like 115, um, so not that much heavier. Um, but, you know, I, I think of the transition I've made along the years, and, and it's been a slow transition, um, but it's, it's probably just the consistent just the consistency of it all um and just just doing the basics like i was, I was never really i was never really like a an athletic or a strong um a kid like i was tall um but that was about it so i, I had a bit of work to do um and, and benny's helped me along the way during during academy but yeah it, the biggest thing was just the consistent eating and gymming um yeah like if, if you didn't do the gym you'd you wouldn't get bigger if you didn't eat you wouldn't get bigger if you or if you ate the wrong food you got you got too big and i sort of learned that in i learned that in 20 in 2020 i, I went from i was about 110 kilos um at the end of 2019 and um you know a big goal of mine was to get heavier to try and compete and, and be more physical on the rugby field so i try to I try to eat way too much and I probably wasn't doing as much training and it, it, it just wasn't, it just wasn't, it was poorly planned on my behalf and, and I just blew out. I ended up being 119 kilos. I got up to, oh yeah, I remember I stepped on the scale one day and I was 123 kilos and like I'm, I'm poor, but I'm not, I'm not like, that's not me. Like it's not my, it's not, it's not for me. Um, like it's, it's probably, like someone like big Caden Neville, like I always see him step on the scales and he's always saying, yeah, I'm about a dollar 23 and, and it's good for his, for his rig. But yeah, I just, I just couldn't handle it. And it, and it didn't really, it didn't really help. So I've, I've sort of found that, um, you know, that balance of, of eating and training and I'm quite happy where I am at the moment. Of course, like I've, I've got to still, I've got to get stronger and I've, I've got to get faster and, and all this, but you know, just the consistent, just the consistency of it all. Like it might take another couple of years for me to get, um, you know, a little bit bigger and a little bit, a little bit stronger, um, a little bit faster and all that. But it's something that, you know, I'm happy to take time with. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's some really good lessons there for some uh, younger people trying not to get big too quickly. I think, yeah. Um, yeah, everyone sort of goes through that. I think we're, 
people are demanding sort of size from them and uh, really good people actually go and eat and do all the right things and they tip the yeah. scale the other way sometimes. It's trying to find out what works for your height um, yeah. because extra weight without the ability to get off the ground or, you know, you lose a bit of speed, then that payoff isn't quite there. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting how long it, or not long that, that you've taken to discover that. And I think everyone goes through that. So it's a good lesson for young kids coming through as well. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I just, I just wish I knew that beforehand. Um, yeah, it would have been handy. Um, you know, sort of, sort of saved the season of, of going through the, yeah, the disappointment, I guess. But no, it was good. It was a good learning curve for me. Yeah. Mm. So, what else have you learned through your strength and through strength and conditioning training as you've progressed for your rugby career? Yeah. Um, probably the other thing was just other than like the consistency of it all was, um, yeah, just just the basics. Yeah, like just the basics of. Of, of a good program and um, and like how much it can affect you. Um, I think, you know, if you, if you sort of get carried away doing um, like all of these things that are quite like niche and whatnot, and, and you and you start doing too many things, um, like it's like skills in rugby, I guess. Like if if you think thinking of doing all these offloads and oh, I don't know all these fancy kicks and stuff like that, but you you can't kick a ball properly or you can't pass a ball properly. Um, like I think to my role as a lock, um, like if I'm trying to, yeah, do all that fancy stuff, but I can't, I'm not a good line out operator or I, like I'm poor in the scrum, like I'm not doing my core role. And so like whenever I go in the gym, if I've got an extra, like I've got an extra session that I did today, for example, I'll just go and hit, like, I'll just go and hit the basics. Like I won't try to do anything like too creative or, or anything out of like, like what I don't know. Like I'll just do, yeah four sets of 10, just at a good intensity, um, that, like at a weight that I'm comfortable with when I'm pushing myself towards the end. Um, so it's, it's just like, it's just the basics of, yeah, of, of the whole strength and conditioning sort of, sort of system that, uh, yeah, I've, I've just sort of just learned that just to do the basics, do it well, do it consistently and, and, and you'll see results, yeah. I might just jump in there. It's really, yeah, another really good insight. Like the people want the fancy, but the basics get the job done, right? 80% of what you do probably in the gym is so similar to every other person in there. Yeah. But it's yeah, only 20% is probably different for your position and different things. But the basics, it, it just being consistent and being doing a good job of it. Yeah. Which you, you're very diligent. I always used to see you in on your days off doing the extras. Yeah. If, if you could, a couple of weekends probably a bit tough on the body yeah yeah most of the time you're there yeah mm. it's interesting that you mentioned about your kicking game because i do remember oh was it 2016 2017 you did a chip and chase uh, i think it was second <laughs> what was a second grade of colts yeah and you yeah. did you did regather and you got up doing the dougie as well so i do, yeah. I do remember that. <laughs> yeah i don't have that i don't have that much uh that much carry on anymore oh, okay, I'm just, okay. yeah, I'm just operating <laughs> operating in, in my sort of li little little area i don't, I mean, I don't the, know yeah. the, the, the bench went wild that day the yeah that <laughs> yeah, was a good day missed the, uh, yeah. the glory days so if you could go back and speak to yourself as a young player in the academy system yeah. what advice would you give yourself probably probably just that like probably just just what i touched on it was you know, for, for a long time, I, I try to do, I, I try to, I probably try to do too much. Like I was, I was eating too much and then I would, I would go, oh, I'm now I'm too sloppy or like now, like I think I'm too fat. It's affecting my, my bounce off the ground. Like, oh, now I'll go the complete other, like the other side of the spectrum where I was, I was like starving myself and I wasn't having anything to eat. Um, you know, in the gym. Yeah. Like I'd, I'd try to do all these different things that you see on, you know, you see on, um, on Instagram or whatever, like these new stretches and, and, and ways of, you know, yeah, making yourself faster and stuff. But like, yeah, if, if I was to go back and talk to myself, like just put in, just just work hard and, and just put in the consistent effort to to get better. Um, because I think that's that's just that's just the gold in um, you know, in it all. It's it's 
yeah, like you can you can do all these these fancy things and, and whatnot, but if you just do the basics, like like Benny said, if you do them well, if if you do them often enough, um, like you'll see results. Like there's no doubt you'll see results, and and those results are gonna f- like far outweigh like any little things that you might like make a a couple of percent gains in. But you know if you, you're just doing the the core the core basics of of strength and conditioning of like skills on the rugby field of of diet dieting you know have your treats every now and then but just eat consistently well um like you're gonna see you're gonna see the benefits in two to three weeks rather than you're doing a little bit of ham all these sort of fancy things and then you might see payoff for you know months or, or whatnot so yeah that's the biggest thing for me just consistency yeah yeah I think you see that on the Brumbies um, Instagram page when they're posting the gym videos. You, yeah. you just see consistent. You're not doing any, anything flashy. You're just doing the basics, just as you're saying. You're doing them really well. You're doing them consistently, and you're getting the results. And it's it's definitely showing out in the park. The, the squad is available. They're playing some really good rugby from week one all the way up to now. Yeah. And, yeah, it's just, just everything that you touched upon. Yeah. Yeah, no. I'll probably think about back to preseason, like everything that we did in preseason, it was, there was nothing new. There was nothing, um, you know, strange that we did in the gym. It was just like like the Brumbies have always been good at just doing, you know, the basics, doing them really well. Yeah, of course, like chucking in a few things that are specific to, to my position or, you know, like fly half or wingers positions. But yeah, like the, the crux of it is just going out and doing just, just the basics, yeah. Do you find you have a good balance between training in the gym and on the field at Brumbies? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's. I think it, it's, pro- it's probably the same in, in most, uh, not just like Super Rugby, but like all, I guess, high performance, um, like professional, professional sports. It's, you know, week to week, you're gonna, you're gonna come up with new challenges, and they get like we had a really physical game on the weekend. We had a lot of travel, um, like from we left Thursday morning to go to New Zealand, and, and at four o'clock in the morning we didn't get to the hotel where we were staying um, until six p.m. New Zealand time. So that's yeah, that's like like it's a f- four o'clock Aussie time. It's a twelve hour like that's a twelve hour day traveling. Um, then yeah, boys got to eat, boys got to um, you know go out and do recovery. And, and jump in the pool and get moving and whatnot. Um, so I think back to like the challenge that we faced then, and then the challenge of, of training now. And it's 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 not going to be the same as like a preseason day where you haven't had to do anything on the weekend or say like a bye week when you've just come off fresh. Like you can really go in into that week knowing that you can like ring the tail out and get the most out of that week. So. Yeah, like like week to week, it's always going to be different, um, and, and you're just going to have to adapt on the way. I think, and and that's and that's and that's one thing that they've, they've done quite well. I feel like over the years, and, and it's something that we're getting better at as well. Um, yeah, for example, we, we we stayed off feet and just just walked. Well, we didn't stay off feet, but we just walked um, our Monday session, where typically we'd be we'd be running and doing a like a little bit of intensity intensity based work, but it was just purely just just walking through, making sure the boys were across their detail, um, and that's off the back of yeah, just a long day of travel and and just adapting, adapting and being really smart. Yeah. So when you do, so when you do arrive to the the hotel, yeah. who don't you want to be roomed up with? Yeah, <laughs> probably probably fellow Vikings, um, Tommy Hooper. He's a bit of a snorer, um, <laughs> big fella. I, I room with Lenny, and he can he can snore too. But I, I'm a bit of a snorer too. I'm probably I'm probably worse snorer than Lenny. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely definitely Tommy Hooper and, and Tom Ross. They actually get, they get they get room together for the specific. <laughs> then both <laughs> snorers, yeah. So you just got to stay away from those blokes in, in your suite. Yeah, wow, that's good. Thank you. So, uh, so over the last two seasons, you have improved your game and ability to be one of the best locks in Super Rugby in our eyes. Um, what improvements and adjustments did you make to take that leap? Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, 
I don't really consider myself um, quite there yet. I, I want to be, I want to be a lot better than than I am now. But um, but what I think about that sort of transition I made from 2019 to 2020, where I was I was you know in, in decent shape, and then I, I went too far over. You know, I was 100 up to 123 kilos, and oh yeah, I wasn't moving around the, the park well. I mean, I was physical, but it sort of had a negative effect on how well I could move, how well I operate in the line out. Um, you know, blokes can't lift me because I was just way too big and and slow off the ground. Um, and then I think to that, that preseason from 2020 to 2021, and and I was um, like I was I was way more athletic. You know, we we had we had um, a lot of running that preseason, and and that sort of put a lot of um, yeah a lot of money in the bank for me. It was just I got down into really good shape. I was 114, I was 113 kilos, um, but, but I moved much better than, than I was at 123. Um, and sort of with that, like that, you know, that muscle memory of being 123 kilos and trying to, and trying to move your body into contact. I, like I felt, I felt like I had that similar, that similar feeling. So like I was able to replicate that, um, but just add a lighter weight. Um, so, so it was just, yeah, for me, it was just getting the body right. Um, and then over the, over the sort of the couple of years I was, um, you know, I've been, been lucky enough to train under Dan McKellar and, and Laurie Fisher, who are probably like in my eyes, they're, they're two of the best coaches in, in the world. Um, and I, like I say that pretty, like pretty naively, I guess, like, cause I don't know any other coaches <laughs> and I've never been un, under any other coaches, but like I, I truly believe that they're probably one of the best, like two of the best coaches in the world. Um, you know, they're they're honest when they need to be honest, and and they're um, you know, they're hard on you. So and they get the most out of you. So yeah, like I've taken a, I've taken so much away from them, in terms of the breakdown and, and line out and and all the, like the specific roles around. Like me as me being as a lock. Um, yeah, definitely them too. Like them too, along with the. The sort of physical transition I made from 2020 to 2021, but then yeah, the last sort of four or five years of being under them have made a huge difference. Yeah, awesome. I'm going to say some of um, like to think of those two coaches, they're really detail orientated, and um, you know, sharing an office where you'd come up very early in the morning with the lineouts. You're always there at you know, quarter past seven, seven thirty in the morning, way before other people going through a lot of line out detail. So yeah. that's rubbed off on you. And it's also a credit to you, not many players actually go into that much detail. And the fact that you were there always early and you leave no stone unturned, I've, I've witnessed that is, you know, adding yeah. to your development why you're, you're never quite happy as well. So you want to keep progressing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's it. I've sort of learned, I've learned that off like guys like yourself and, and the rest of the, um, the rest of the high performance stuff. I mean, they're always in there. You know, you're always in, you're always in there. And an hour, an hour and a half before any of the other players, there's no reason. Um, there's no reason why, if, if you want to be a proper professional, that that you're in there too. Um, you know, whether it's it's just having a stretch or doing an extra bike or whatever. Like, yeah, there's no reason why you can't be in there and and doing it too. You don't look like a like a flog or anything. You're just trying to get the most out of yourself. So, yeah. Hi everyone, we just wanted to take a break from this episode. We hope you are enjoying this episode so far and also all the content we have produced. We appreciate all the support from our listeners and followers so far. If you haven't already, sign up to Elite Rugby SNC newsletter today. We provide you a free exclusive content each and every single week to our subscribers. Link in the bio. Remember to like, subscribe and share Elite Rugby SNC on social media to all your friends and families. So thanks again for your support, and now back to the episode. Yeah, awesome. So when you are traveling as well on the plane or bus, is there a certain person you like to sit next to and, and hold their hand, or you're just trying to be by yourself, or or what? Yeah, no, I like a bit of I like a bit of alone time when we're traveling, um, especially if you can get on a plane with with no one beside you. It's it's bloody it's gold. You just you, you can spread the legs out. Same on the bus. Oh, yeah. So ideally, no one. Yeah. 
That's all good. Yeah, it certainly adds to a travel day, doesn't it? When you got no one next year, you go, this is going to be a good trip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so currently you're in the final weeks of the Super Rugby season. What is your current gym and field routine? Yeah. So as I, as I said before, it's um, – it looks a lot different to what it did at the start of the season. And I, and I think, um, you know, it's credit to all the high performance unit, just, just making sure that they're looking after us um, because there's just, it's just unrealistic. Like if you want to train the same way in preseason as the same, the same way you want to train in that sort of block as the first half of the season, it's just not going to work. And then the same can sort of be said for the, the first part of the, well, whatever part of the block until, say the first half of the season to the second half of the season, it's, 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 it's just not realistic. Um, you've got to, like, you've, you've got to adapt. And um, like, I think they've done that quite well at, at the moment where in, in a shorter week, um, obviously traveled on Sunday and with a Friday, with a Friday game, we, we want to get back and, and, and train the next day. And we don't usually do that, but it's just, it's just something you have to, like, it's just something you have to do. You have to adapt. Um, to a shorter turnaround. So we had Monday, which was a bit of an in-store walking. Um, it was an optional gym if you wanted to get that strength in. To, uh, yesterday, we, we had our bigger session. You know, we were going at the detail at full speed. Um, another sort of power session, speed session, just to sort of get us um, sparked up before we go into that rugby session, sorry. And that's a, that's a rugby session, a combination of units. Um, so backs are doing starter plays or whatever they do. And then, um, yeah, forwards are doing line outs and scrums. And, and then we'll go into the rugby session. Um, and then today, day off. You, you always get a day off um, into a captain's run. And then, yeah, and then play. So um, that, that, that's what it looks like this week. Next week, I, I, I know we're, we, we've got a full seven-day turnaround. So we, we play Friday. And um, and we're on Saturday the next week, so we get the whole weekend off, which is which is quite nice because um, we don't usually get like the whole weekend off um, or a weekend off at all. So um, sound a bit spoiled, but yeah, like it's it's just nice having a weekend off where, where we don't have to do anything. Um, and then so so Monday, Tuesday is training, Wednesday's off, and then Thursday is sort of that power session into rugby, and then Friday captains run, and then Saturday. Saturday we play against the Blues next week. So, yeah, it sort of varies week to week. But, um, no, they're doing a good job at sort of keeping us fresh this part of the season. Yeah, nice. So, on the Sunday, I, I suspect a few boys will go out and play some golf. Are you a, yeah. a golf fan? And if so, are you any good? And who would you rate as the best golfer out of the squad? Yeah. Yeah, I was fancy myself as a bit of a golfer. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm nowhere near the best um but yeah there's there's actually a fair few boys that, that go and have a crack um who's the best probably oh, i've heard i've heard whispers it's jerome jerome brown but like andy plays andy muhead plays heaps um same with banksy uh yeah hamish dalzell who was who was here for a while before he went to the crusaders um coverage he, he played heaps yeah all these saps food he, he loves it mate i could go on i reckon half the squad <laughs> yeah i reckon half the squad players it's it's pretty good yeah that's good so what advice do you have for people on managing their bodies to keep performing week in and week out yeah i'd probably i'd probably just go back to what i said at the start and, and it's just it's probably just consistent like consistency so if, if you're doing if you're doing the same thing every every week um like your body's going to get used to it and that sort of whole uh you know that whole sort of research like research or you know loading like loading and all the research around loading um can be brought into it but like if you're doing the same thing week in week out then your body's going to get used to it so like just making sure that yeah you're stre you're stretching or you're um you know you're using like ice baths or saunas or uh yeah spas um like whatever you have to do to get your body right but like if you, if you go from if you go from one week of doing all that good stuff for your body and then the next week 
you haven't done any of it and then you expect to perform the same way or train the, the same amount, like it's just not realistic. Like you're not going to get the, that much purchase out of your body. Um, and there was, uh, there was a quote by someone, oh, I, I, forgot, I forgot what it was, but it, it was something sort of along the lines of, um, like if you, if you haven't done, uh, yeah, if you haven't done what you need for your body, your body's not going to do enough for you. And that's, yeah, that sounds silly, but, um, and you know what I'm trying to say, but yeah, yeah, we do. You're just trying to put, you get it, you put in what you get out, or you, you know, you, you get in what you put out, whatever it's, whatever it's bloody the other way around in yeah. my head. Um, but I think yeah. the important thing for you is, and you kept mentioning the consistency, what you do yeah. week in and week out in terms of training and your recovery and the way that you're focusing on the, the game and even your downtime, just be really consistent because your body adapts. Yeah. And it's used to that. And you know, that's where you can get those minor little gains if you just do a little bit more. Yeah. And it's the erratic, inconsistent behavior and training that it leads to trouble. So, yeah. which is high performance sport looks after that. But it's yeah. also we, yeah, your behaviors around that as well. Yeah. That's it. Like, yeah. At the end of the day, you're only, you're only going to get what you put in. And um, yeah, that goes from, yeah, that goes from gym and, um to all the way to recovery and, and whatnot so yeah i just try to look at it that way and yeah awesome yeah so over Great the last answer. so over the last decade the brumbies have had probably the best mall in super rugby yeah. can you give us some insight on why the brumbies are just so damn good at mauling <laughs> uh, yeah well yeah we shouldn't talk about it too much we've got the we got one of the best yeah. malls coming up this weekend, <laughs> um, but it's it's yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember one year we and it, one year it was it was my first year, so it was 2018, and um and we had we had like an awful mall. Oh, well, compared to what it usually is, um, you know, we we were scoring more tries every game the year before. Um, like watching it from the sidelines. I, I remember watching it like that's called one or two tries a game easily. And then 2018, we didn't. And and then like a couple of blokes left and 2019, like we started scoring heaps of tries again. And I, I reckon it was just, and and a lot of put, people just know it being in the environment too. Like you, you got to love it. You got to love morning. Um and it, it only takes it only takes one or two like weak links to to like really wreck it, you know. Um, it's just like like rowing a boat. Like if one bloke's out of sync, you're just gonna buckle and and, and capsize or whatever. Um, yeah, like it comes down to every bloke doing his job, and and every bloke having a thirst for it because um, you have to put your head in a pretty dark place. And and if you don't and if you don't love doing it, then you're not gonna stick your head in there. <laughs> And you, you, like that side of the mall is going to pop up, and then the whole thing is just buckled. So um, yeah, definitely comes down to just everyone doing their job and just love doing their job. Yeah, because it's not like it's not nice doing it, but you score tries off the back of it. You you, yeah. you set the backs up off the back of it. So um, yeah, I'm sure the I'm sure the hookers love it when they when the ball's going over, especially for Lau. He loves putting that finger <laughs> up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mate, I reckon, yeah, he's the biggest star, mate. Don't get it started. He's, <laughs> he loves just celebrating all the tries and all the boys up up front are just gassed and he's just sitting there doing these ones. <laughs> After having done nothing, just just with the ball at the back doing these ones. Yeah. He did throw the ball into the, you know, the right person correctly as well. Yeah, he did that. He did that. He's got the easiest, he's got the easiest job. He just throws the ball and then gets there and puts it over the line. Yeah. No, we... So how, so how do you deal with the pressure to perform at the elite level? Um, yeah, at, at the start, excuse me, at, at the start, it was like, I, I, was, I guess I was just playing off like pure excitement, you know, like I, like I was, I was over the moon and like I still pinch myself when I, I remember like getting a call and, receiving the email like we want to sign you and like I was over the moon like 
I was I was at mum's house in Brisbane, and yeah, it was just yeah, it was just unreal. Um, and you know when, when I yeah when I, when I debuted in 2018 against the Huguaras, the Argentinian team, like again, like I was just I was just over the moon. I was just just running around like full of full of adrenaline, and just testosterone. Like I was just yeah. I was yeah, I was just high as anything, you know. But you know, you still you still do get that. You you still do get that those sort of rushes. But it, it sort of comes down to like just being aware of your your body, you being aware of your mind, and 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 just going back and nailing your detail. Um, like at the start of the week, I'll have reviewed like what 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 I did in the game and and areas I can improve and. Um, and then you just take that through the next week. So it's just continually like refining that. And I think I think the really good players, like the really good players are just good at doing that. Like just going from week to week. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> I just lost my voice. That's so good, mate. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh, sorry, fellas. Um Okay, I've been doing it several times as well. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It's just got a bit of a tickle. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> no, the, the really good players are just are just good at doing that. Like going back to <clears throat> review, and then where do I get better? And then take it into the next game, and it's just a continuous process. And 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 as you keep doing that, you find little ways to get better. And then, like I, I'm I'm not perfect, but like I've found that sort of following that process, I can find different ways to, to get better. Like I can find different things in my game that I need to improve and and how do I do that? Then I go out and train that and then I and then I put it into practice and then and then I hopefully it transfers across into, into the games. So it's just yeah, it's just like awareness and um and just repetition, consistency. It's just yeah, it's just it's just consistency. You just got to keep doing it. Yeah. Great insight into, you know, little bits of chipping away all the time. And, you know, there's always ways to improve. And yeah, probably the key is people, uh, you kept mentioning there, that you, you find those bits and then you try and put it into training and refine that in training so it can be put into the game rather than uh, finding something you can improve and just think that you can go do it in a game without actually... Uh, trying to do that in the training world, which I think for the lower level guys or guys that are inspired uh, inspired to actually reach the next level, you know that that's a continual process. So that's really good insight. Yeah, yeah, hundred hundred percent. I try to I try to do that too when I was you know when I was playing a lot of club rugby and and sort of under twenties and and whatnot. I'd I'd look at a game and. I'd go, yeah, I need to do this, this, and this. And then the next game I'd try to do it. And then I was wondering, oh, like, why didn't I do it? You know, and it wasn't, it, it was, it, it was the fact that I didn't create those sort of, those links in my brain and I didn't practice it. Like, I'm, you're never going to get good at something if you, if you don't do it um, and if you don't practice it. So, the, yeah, the biggest thing and, and, and the, the biggest thing I've learned in terms of, like constantly refining yourself and, and trying to get better is, is just, yeah, it's just that. Like it's just picking something, training it, and then transferring it into a game and just continually doing that, continually doing that. Yeah. I think one of the coolest things you guys do as a squad is when you score points or get scored against, you all get in a circle, you all take that deep breath, mm. reset yourself, and then go to the next role. I think, I think that's awesome. Can you speak a, a little bit about that? Yeah. Yeah, it's something we've we've sort of done it as a team over the last, I think, about two two or three years, um, and it's just off the back of a lot of uh, a lot of psychological, uh, yeah, research or or such, and um, it, it just comes back to like awareness. So so we come in as a group, you know, everyone gets that one big breath, and then. And then we're all centered and then we're, we're able to refocus on the next task. Um, like you, you find yourself in that same situation, everyone's sort of 
scattered eyes are like on the screen trying to look at things like people are looking at their hands or whatever um but you know just 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 trying to bring that that all awareness back to each other we're all doing the same thing we recenter each other ourselves and then we just we sort of focus on the next task and we, and we go um we get we get another we get an, the next message and then and then we just go and execute um yeah and i, I found that's really that's re, that's really um, useful as a team it's something you can do like as yourself as well um you know if you ever find yourself in a game and you, and you need to reset you can just breathe um yeah bring awareness back to your body and then just go and execute your next task yeah that's awesome so my final two question questions what is your game day routine do you have any superstitions like you put on the left left sock left boot first or you have to sit in a certain corner or yeah. like there's a certain song you have to listen to what what superstitions do you have if any no i'm not much of a superstitious man um i, I don't know if i'd call them superstitions that yeah there's there's things i like doing <laughs> Like I'll always put my right boot on, like you said. Like I, <laughs> I'll put my right boot on before I put my left boot on. Um, I don't know why. I just I just do it, and then I'll take my left boot off, and then I'll take my right boot off. I don't I don't know why. I just do that. Um, but that like, that's probably the only thing. Yeah, that I that I do. I don't I don't try to get. I don't, I don't like doing it because then. I remember I remember I tried to do something, in. Um, in under twenties, when I was with with Benny in the under twenties and the under twenties Brumby system, and yeah, it just didn't work for me. Uh, yeah, I, I did. Some, I forgot what I did, but I, I did something, and it just didn't work for me. So I just went, no, nah, from now on, I'm just going to do whatever I want, eat whatever I want, wake up whenever I want. It's just, yeah. Otherwise, it just you don't get it right, or it doesn't happen, and then you just throw yourself off, and you're thinking. I'm going to play horribly, but it's just, yeah, it's just all in your head. Yeah, fair enough. A good routine that adaptable to your environment is pretty important because yeah. you, each yeah. environment's different. Yeah, when it happens, yeah. So that's good that you've uh, made a, a choice to try something and then you chucked it out and just went, no, nah, I'm pretty chilled. That's good. Yeah. Mm. So we do have a fan question from Cam Holt, a fellow teammate of yours down there at the Tuggeron Vikings. <laughs> So how do you find yourself in such good positions to attack the ball when on more defense? Are there any specific cues you're focusing on? And what are some tips you can share? Um, I'll give them, give them away because I'm fellow fellow Vikingsman. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I'll go down there and, and talk to him. I won't, I won't share it here. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I'll just... Um, like going back to what I said again, it's probably just like I, I was never really like I like at the start when when we did malls and when we did lineouts and and whatnot in units at Brumbies. I, like I, I was never ripping through ripping through malls when I was yeah the first when I was firstly first when I was first there. Sorry, um, like I was never ripping through malls and yeah and, and like a lineout call or whatever. Uh, it, it sort of just it just grew onto me I guess as I yeah as I progress throughout the year but like like one thing I've always tried to be in the mall is just aggressive um yeah it's just just try to be as aggressive as I can like you, you're trying to find a scene between two blokes who are who are trying to deny that sort of scene and, and you've got to come straight through the middle of it so yeah like you're only ever going to get through there if you're aggressive um and Holty's actually always been quite aggressive when it comes to to malls and, and stuff like that but yeah there's a few like there's a few things that you can do is just uh try to get try to get side on so if you think about it if you're trying to get through that scene like you don't want to be square on because you're going to have two blokes that are, that are shutting you out um yeah it's one thing big nev um big k nev sort of taught me it was like as they're coming down from the line out it's just trying to um square Square yourself off, not square yourself off. Sorry, like get lateral and then just punch through that seam because if obviously you're, you're narrower, so you can you can try and fight through that seam earlier. You got more of a reach compared to if you're just square on and trying to reach. You got much a much further reach. So um, yeah, there was there was those sort of things, but 
like it always came back to being aggressive. Like if I was ne- if I if I was never aggressive to get through that same, like I was never getting through any same. So it was just yeah, just always been a bit aggro. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, serious intent. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's awesome. So that's all the questions I have for today. Um, ben, you got any any final thoughts? Uh, no, just uh, thanks for coming on. I know it's uh, a game week and yeah, really appreciate it. And it's good to see you again, mate. It's, it's all good. Yeah. yeah. Next time. Oh, no worries. Yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for having me. It's, um, yeah, it's good what you guys are doing with, um, with rugby and, and specifically SNC. I think there's a lot there's a lot in that space where you can, you can uh, educate. Yeah, we can educate boys. Yeah. Awesome. So thanks, Darcy, for, for coming on. We, we really appreciate it. And our listeners, listeners are going to get a lot out of this. And uh, thank you, Ben, for joining us as well. Yeah. Cheers. Awesome. Thanks, fellas. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Elite Rugby SNC podcast. Remember to like, subscribe, and rate Elite Rugby SNC on Spotify, YouTube, and Instagram. Sign up to, to become a beast today via the link in the description or via Instagram page. Also, sign up to our newsletter and receive free bonus content each and every single week. So don't wait, make that good decision and join Elite Rugby SNC today and take your game to the next level. So thanks everyone for listening. Thank you, Ben, and thank you, Darcy.